This is an intro to the serverless manifest plugin. So what this plugin uh, is really for is like when you deploy your serverless stack, there's various endpoints, uh, information about functions, different stack outputs, uh, etc. Really whatever you want to get out of uh, the backend that you've just deployed, it will output it to a manifest file. This manifest file is super handy for deploying this information to let's say a service discovery service or actually just consuming this directly in a front-end application. That's typically what I use it for. So we're actually gonna pop over to the front-end app and I'm gonna show you a demo of this. So inside my project here, I have a front-end. This is a simple React app and a serverless back-end. So here's my serverless YAML uh, with some endpoints, etc. cetera. Uh, but inside of the front-end application, uh, typically I'll be calling out to some API that API URL, you usually set in some sort of environment variable, typically in a .env file. Um, and this URL uh, here is what I have to keep manually updating. So every time I want to you know, deploy this into maybe a different um, stage or a different region, or I tear down my backend stack and uh, redeploy it, I have to keep manually updating this URL. And that gets uh, pretty tedious and cumbersome. So what we can actually do is use the manifest uh, from our service to actually do that. So I'm gonna switch over to the terminal. So we're inside of the backend folder here of our project. Uh, if I go ahead and run serverless info, we can see the information about this particular service. So I just have one get endpoint right now, very, very simple. And this has actually a Dynamo table as well. Um, so I could, you know, what I would typically do would copy and paste this over, go into my, you know, env file and go ahead and update that. And then keep remember to do that, et cetera, et cetera. This, this goes for all stack outputs. Um, it gets really tedious, especially when you're using like Cognito user pools and all kinds of other stuff. So instead of this manual kind of copy and paste workflow, which really breaks down in CI and CD, Let's actually use the manifest plugin to do this for us. So inside of our backend folder, what we're going to do is npm install the serverless manifest plugin. We're going to save this as a dev dependency. You can use yarn or however you want to do this. And after it's installed as a dependency, I'm going to take this and drop it into my serverless.yaml file. So now we have a plugins array with that one plugin defined. Very cool. So if we look at the uh, .serverless, this is a hidden uh, git ignored folder. You should never commit this into uh, your git repo. Um, there's you know, the CloudFormation template, some state, and the actual zipped up functions that we were deploying. Um, let's actually run deploy one more time. So we're gonna run SLS deploy. And what this will do is, let's say we change something in our service, added an endpoint, whatever. Um, now, automatically, after this is done deploying, it will um, create a manifest file. And we're going to take a look at what's in that manifest file. Okay, so the deploy is finished. And as we can see here, the plugin is outputting some information for us. It has saved a manifest file to the .serverless folder into the manifest.json. So let's have a look at what that actually created. So inside of the... Um, uh, manifest file, what we have is all of the URLs that are relevant to our service. So this is actually, you know, if we were mapping custom domains, they, they would be present here. This is our API gateway domain. It's that um, randomly generated um, URL when you deploy into AWS. Um, we have all of the uh, API endpoints broken down by path by function, by method. So if you want to slice and dice this information and pull this in uh, and do different things with it, you can. Um, it also has all of the keyed function information. So the name of the function, the function ARN inside of AWS, the runtime, any triggers that it might have, uh, as well as dependencies. So there's direct, which are the direct dependencies you use directly in the code and nested dependencies. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and then as well, any outputs that we um, actually have in the stack. So um, I had one um, defined in my actual serverless.yaml and then the serverless framework injected a couple others here for me. 
Um, so now I have this file created. Um, what we could do is, you know, write a script inside of, um, you know, our React app to automatically go read the manifest.json file um, and then uh, automatically update this URL. Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, but what we can actually do is, is actually use the plugin to do this for us. So back in our serverless.yaml, what we can do is add a custom block. Uh, this is how you configure plugins with the serverless framework. Uh, and if you add a manifest key, there's a couple of different options. All of those are listed in the docs, um, but we'll just take a look at uh, two of them. So I could customize the output and just output the entire raw manifest wherever I want. Um, but I could also, uh, and, and that would overwrite that default of putting it in the .serverless folder. Um, but uh, what we want to do is actually just uh, give it a post-process um, file to run uh, after we have deployed our service. So um, our file name is post-process, post-process manifest rather. Cool, um, so now if we actually run the manifest and we don't need to deploy to actually regenerate this manifest, what we can do is actually run the uh, serverless, man so if you run um, serverless uh, dash dash help, after you've installed the plugin, you'll notice that there is a new command here um, and that command is manifest. So uh, instead now what we can do is run serverless manifest and it will go ahead and instead of deploying the whole stack, it'll just go ahead and um, output our um, manifest back to the .serverless uh, folder, but it'll also run that file that we just gave it. So this post, uh, this process manifest.js file, it's actually this file right here next to the serverless.yaml. And this can live anywhere in your project or it could be like an NPM dependency, etc. But here, what it is, is really just exporting a, a function. Um, this can be sync or async. Um, and really all it is is a function that it takes in the manifest data, so that giant object. Um, and then it will, uh, you can do whatever you want with it, right? So in this function, we're actually going to take uh, our, our function endpoint, and we're gonna automatically add it to our .env file over here. Um, and this uh, right here is actually just outputting all this stuff. I'm just doing the deep console.log. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, actually make this uh, insert the um, URL of our function. So we want to uh, insert this users create URL into our .env file. Okay, so I've updated our process manifest file here uh, with just some utility functions. This is you could probably find this on on npm um, to do something like this, or use any npm package you want here. Uh, but this is just for illustrative purposes. So what we can do because we get the full uh, manifest uh, object in here, uh, we can actually just like look and see. All right, what do we want? So it's keyed by the stage. So like I want the dev stage. I want uh, something from the URLs, and how about let's do it by function. So I have the hello function here. I wanna get that hello functions URL. So inside of our process manifest, what we can do is say, um, all right, the manifest data, dev stage, by function, hello. Um, and actually I'm missing URLs here, URLs. So uh, let's just double check that. So dev URLs by function dot hello dot URL. So we need one more thing here. All right, so we have our URLs. We also have uh, the path to our env um, file that lives in our front end folder. Uh, we have this little utility function that's gonna update my existing um, environment variable. If you remember, that was the key from right here. So let's go ahead and run this. So in, back in my terminal, uh, in the serverless uh, backend folder, I can run sls manifest. That will uh, regenerate the manifest with the latest fresh data from the remote um, API gateway. Uh, it will also run through our post-processing step. So you can see here that, hey, here's my URL that I found and it's injecting it to that um, environment variable. Uh, if we go look 
uh, we can see, hey, there's our new environment variable. So now every time that I deploy this stack, uh, or if really, if anybody takes this project, I'll, I'll share a link uh, to this GitHub repo after the fact. If anyone takes this project and runs the deploy command uh, from this uh, service, it's gonna go ahead and automatically inject those environment variables that, that are needed for the front end. So this is just really one example of how you can use the manifest plugin to automatically inject you know, front end variables uh, you could also use this to automatically send off uh, any of these values, output um, values, uh, ARNs, etc., needed by other services into something like AWS uh, SSM or into console, your own secret store, uh, or to you know send this to Slack or whatever. Um, I'm also using manifest files to automatically generate documentation for my services. Uh, but yeah, there's just a lot you can do. Um, with uh, just this kind of raw data you get back from your uh, manifest, including uh, all of the dependencies a function uses. So let me actually show that piece. So I'm gonna install another package uh, of mine called Analytics. This is for client-side and server-side uh, analytics with JavaScript. Uh, but let's go ahead and add this to our function. So here it is, now we're requiring this into our function. So uh, when I actually run the manifest again, or if I deploy my service, uh, what we're gonna see is actually uh, in that manifest uh, file. And I'm actually gonna, uh, there's a flag on this command, uh, dash dash JSON, to actually just output the raw JSON. So uh, let's take a look. So here we have our functions key again, and we see our hello function. Uh, but now, instead of just having the name and the ARN, etc., we also have our, our dependencies here. So our direct dependency, this is like what is actually required in the code, and then all of the nested dependencies that that module might be using, including the version numbers. So this is extremely handy for keeping your dependencies up to date and making sure you don't have any uh, vulnerabilities um, that are live in production. So this is also something that I use uh, when I generate my service documentation to just keep tabs on this. GitHub does a good job of this as well. Um, using the uh, JSON flag, what you can do is actually use something like JQ to just pull back uh, information. So if you are using you know, this in CI and you're, you're not outputting to a file or what have you, you can use the JSON flag and pipe that so here I'm just gonna um, run this, use JQ to say, hey, get me the .dev .functions block. And this basically gives you back that information um, that you can do more stuff with. When you use the JSON flag, none of the other logs uh, output, so you can programmatically do whatever you want with that JSON. Uh, also quite handy. Um, but yeah, so that's about it for the um, manifest plugin. There's a silent option as well, yada, yada, yada. But um, yeah, it's quite handy um, for taking the values from your service, all of the stack outputs, um, any ARNs, really anything that you want to export um, from your service, uh, you can put into that manifest file. You want to make sure that you don't git commit this. Uh, so actually when you run this, it automatically adds um, the defaults to your git ignore. Uh, but if you are outputting to your own uh, manifest destination, make sure that you do get ignore this stuff because you don't want um, to accidentally leak secrets from your manifest. Um, as well as like if you don't want to actually output this to your machine at all, um, that is also an option. So that is the disable output. If you set that to true, so we'll go into serverless.yaml. We'll say, hey, you know what? We can't, uh, we can't output this at all. This is too secret. Uh, we don't want anyone to mess up, so disable output. Uh, now, uh, probably in my post-processing step, I would actually send that data off elsewhere. Um, but yeah, basically now the manifest file won't even um, create itself. So let's actually run that again and I'll show you. So let's run SLS manifest. There we go. It has still done its syncing mechanism, but as we can see here in this, the, the dot serverless file uh, folder, uh, nothing has been generated. So there's nothing on our machine. 
So that's the uh, manifest plugin in a nutshell. Uh, please feel free to shout out to me on the Twitters uh, if you have any questions. Uh, I'm at David Wells. Uh, I hope you find this plugin uh, useful. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any feature requests.